Hey guys, this is part two on a little mini series we're doing on compression. Uh, part one, which you can find here, is about what is compression, what are the settings on a compressor. So if you don't know all that, you want to check out part one. This is how and when to use a compressor. It turns out it's an artistic decision, so there's not necessarily any right or wrong. We use it when we want to shrink dynamic range. Well, when would we ever want to shrink dynamic range? Well, if a player is too dynamic, maybe they're not blending well uh, on their loud notes. They're playing with too much gusto and their quiet stuff. They're laying back a little too much. Sometimes inexperienced players will do that. Their, their louds are too loud and their softs are too soft. Sometimes you've got some effects that can be really peaky, like a wah or an auto wah. And then sometimes we use just a little bit of compression to glue a mix together. And what it does is it just makes it sound a little more polished than it was. If you've, you know, when your bow changes, maybe you've got, you know, the attack on a note is a little louder than you want it to be. And it starts trailing off at the end when you start running out of bow. Compression can shrink those a little bit and make you sound like a little bit more of a polished player than you are, which is a good thing. There are some effects of compression. It makes your louds get softer and it makes your softs get louder. It shrinks that dynamic range. But some of the side effects, it can lose a little bit of sparkle. Uh, usually this is in some of your higher frequencies, they tend to be affected more by compression, which is why there's often a tone knob on a compressor. So if you find that, uh, wow, I kicked that thing in and it's making me sound a little more polished, but it's also sounding a little more dull, uh, I can dial that back in with the tone. If I'm compressing too much, it can lose life. It can lose some, some of the expressiveness. You know, we use dynamics as an expressive tool. So if I'm compressing too much, the mix can, can get real uh, emotionless. So we may want to back off the compression a little bit. And the other thing is it can increase feedback. And, and that's just, that's a, uh, we could get into why, but it, it's really, if you're having some increased feedback problems because you're using compression, you may want to back it off a little bit. It has to do with the fact that it's making things sustain more. So I've decided I want to compress. How do I do this? The way most people do it is they let their sound engineer handle it. That's handled out at the soundboard. The engineer has the ability to cook put compression on every channel with a digital board he can put compression on on any channel in a mix uh, so a lot of people just let the sound engineer handle it um, if you want to do some of your own compression you can do it and with a multi effects pedal uh, the helix has a compressor and I think the me 80 has a compressor in it a lot of these multi effects pedals will have compressors in them um, and or you can do it with a stomp box now you might be looking for a compressor stomp box and you're like i'm not finding i'm finding a lot of stuff that says sustain that's it so guitar players use these to increase sustain and how does that work well when they pick the note then there's this logarithmic decay of of the tone of the note right if we compress that dynamic range then that logarithmic decay actually happens slower and it gives them sustain so we have a bow hand that allows us to sustain a note as much as we want. But on a stomp box, you'll typically see, like when they talk about dialing up the sustain, that means they're increasing compression. So if you want to increase compression, you dial up the sustain. If you want to decrease compression, you dial it back. And then the other way is you can do it in your digital audio workstation. If you're recording, all those DAWs have compressors built in. So. Now, where in my signal chain do I want to do this? Um, I would say generally near the end of your signal path, unless there's a really good reason to do it earlier. Um, generally, compression is pretty much at the tail end of a signal path, if not at the very end of the signal path. So I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you understand compression a little bit. Uh, as always, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here, and you can check out some other videos that we've got here. And we will see you next time.